And welcome back to Long Crime, everybody. Now, as we reported to you, Ramon Bueno was found guilty of the majority of the charges that he was facing in connection with shooting Trooper James Casey, and he was officially sentenced to 119 and three quarters years in prison. And we want to get some perspective, and who better than Trooper James Casey? And we're going to get to Trooper Casey in a minute. I want to turn to yesterday when Trooper Casey had an opportunity to speak in court during the sentencing. Take a look. I'd like to uh, thank you, thank the court for allowing me to speak. Um, I'd like to also thank the Phoenix Police Department and Detective Butcher for the excellent work that they did and uh, all the other agencies that were involved. Um, I don't really have much to say. Uh, I said most of it when I was testifying. The um, couple of things that I will mention is, one, originally I was going to ask you to sentence him to, I know numerically it's not possible, to 155 years in prison one for each stitch that I received in my mouth, but obviously that's uh, not there. Um, I would ask you though, um, I'm in concurrent with uh, uh, Attorney Dahl. Um, I would like you, if possible, to run all these sentences consecutive um, as long as possible, so uh, he will never see the light of day. He is a very dangerous man. Um, had he just kept still that night, we wouldn't be here. I would have dealt with the driver. I would have probably given her a, a, a warning for the window tint violation, and in a way they would have been. His actions what caused us being here today. Um, I will say in respect to the court and time, um, if he is sentenced to enough time that it assures uh, myself, my family, uh, Ray Cruz's family, Ray, Mike, Alfano, and Mike's family, that he will never see the light of day. Um, I will not, I will ask the county attorney, I will not be interested to go forth with the attempted murder trial. I just don't think there's a need to put salt on the, you know, add more insult to injury, I guess, so to speak. So um, I appreciate it and thank you. Well, that was Trooper James Casey yesterday, and this is Trooper James Casey today. Thank you so much for joining us here on Long Crime. I said it to you before we came on, I'll say it to you again. It is an honor, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. So I want to get your uh, perspective right now. He was sentenced to 119 and three quarters years in prison. How are you feeling about the sentence? I'm good. I'm good. Um, you know, as I explained, he got 86, or I'm sorry, 84.5, 85 and a half years direct time. The 119, that's all added with the concurrent time. Um, so in, what's, in Arizona, it's day for day. So there's no early release or no parole. So he'll have to do 85 and a half years. In theory. Right. And, and look, this was a big trial. This was a big ordeal. You know, this is the end of it. And how do you feel being at the end of this? Because, uh, and we're going to get into when you testified as well and what that was like, but going, having a conclusion to this case after everything that happened, how are you feeling today? I feel good. Um, I'm glad it's fine. I, I was saying last night, I feel like it's uh, a ton of bricks have been lifted off my shoulders. I'm very happy it's finally come to a conclusion, and now I'll get on with the next part of my life. And, and part of that includes, I, I have uh, started a book, and this will be a part of that um, uh, Ramon Bueno story. The Ramon Bueno story. How, you're speaking today, you've had a lot of time to reflect on this case, a lot of time to reflect on Ramon Bueno. What are your feelings towards Ramon Bueno today? Uh, you know what? They're the same as they've always been. Um, uh, you know, I, I think he's a coward. Um, you know, he took no responsibility in it. Uh, in fact, I mean, he called me a liar yesterday in his statement. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, hopefully after after all this is over with, um, I'll never give Ramon another another thought again. If, if I mean, you... unfortunately, I'm sure I will. But you know, I, in theory, I'd like to say that, but. Well, if you had an opportunity to say something to him, what would you want to say to him? I don't know. I don't know. You know, I, I don't think I could really answer that right now. Um, had he been a little more contrite about it, I, I'd probably, you know, I, I'd probably have something to say. But again, him calling me a liar yesterday and, yeah. and thinking back on everything I went through, um, you know, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I have really nothing to say to him other than enjoy prison. 
<laughs> well, and there you go. That's a statement right there. I have to say, you're you're an incredibly uh, brave person, and it, it you know when I we covered this case, it was remarkable reading the details of what you went through, and then going back to duty. How did you make that decision to go back after what happened? Well, you know, as I've said, uh, as I said all along um, from the very get go, uh, I, I was a very competitive person growing up. I played sports all my life, so um, I was not going to let him beat me. And um, that was kind of my driving force. Uh, I just, you know, I, I mean, the grace of God, luck, you know, whatever you want to call it, um, I was able to uh, get through everything and get back to duty. So um, th that was really, that was my whole driving force. I did not want him to beat me. Yeah, and look, you're a role model for a lot of law enforcement and people in active duty thinking about what you went through and came back to it. Is there something from this case that you think that will elicit a change in a way where it could impact how these, uh, you know, how, could it impact police shootings in the future? Is there a way to prevent it? Do you think this case was a wake-up call for people in any way? Um, maybe, maybe. You know what, I, I can tell you, I've talked to academy classes about this. Um, it was a wake-up call for me because I, I, I spent, you know, many a nights in the hospital replaying this whole incident over in my head. And as I said, um, Losing track of his hands, uh, I got so focused on identifying him that I lost track of his hands. And I mean, that's one of the first rules they teach you in the police academy, hands kill. You know, you lose track of it. And I did. So I always told, um, you know, I was told the, the, the younger cadets, uh, just you've got to watch the oh, no, hands, you know, and I had been on 14 years at that point. And, you know, I, I you know. I got lax, and it almost cost me my life. Yeah, and there's a, you replay the moment, you think, is there something you could have done differently? And then there's not, there's nothing. I mean, it was a, it's a horrific situation. You had to recount it to a jury and to the world at large when you took the stand. What was it like taking the stand and recounting that moment? And remember, it was for a jury where you're ultimately hoping f that they, you know, they not only believe the, the credible story, but believe that Ramon Bueno is the person who did it. What was it like testifying in this trial? Um, it was tough, you know, um, as I said, uh, what was hard for me was the beginning when, uh, Trooper Ray Cruz was testifying, uh, because see, I, I had never heard a lot of the, uh, a lot of that stuff. Like I didn't know he had cleared my throat, uh, you know, uh, taking bone teeth, you know, everything out of my throat to get me breathing again. And as I said, in the aggravation phase, uh, when I testified there, Ray would always look at me weird when I would make when I went back to duty and I'd make traffic stops in that area. He had never told me what happened, you know. So now I know, and you know it, it's tough. It was very tough. And then as far as me testifying, um, I, it was tough. You know, I, I to be honest with you, when I've talked to my doctor about it, speaking about this has been therapeutic for me. So I've never really had issues talking about it. It actually kind of helps me. Um, I did see a couple of jurors getting upset visibly upset when I was testifying. So, Absolutely. Was Look, to have you testify in this case was the whole case. I, but what, it's funny you mention your fellow officers or the first responders. There's this bond that I felt that when they were trying to save your life and protect you, it's a, it's a sense of protection that I've just saw, but I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more about it. I mean, I just got a glimpse of it from the outside, listening to these officers and uh, you know your fellow teammates speaking about you in a way and getting emotional and choked up. What is that bond like? Um, it's it's a it was a, you know as I said that uh, the uh, in court um, to this day I I consider Ray Cruz a brother of mine, and I don't mean like a law enforcement brother. I mean like a blood brother. I mean that man saved my life. Um, I'll be indebted to him forever. Uh, so, um, you know, it's just, it just goes to the training, you know, and, and we really do, you know, you, you just don't have time to think you act. And, uh, I was glad that both, uh, uh Ray Cruz and Mike Alfano that night, they both acted accordingly and they saved my life and they didn't get shot. You know, when Ramon drove around the second time shooting at them. So, you know, not only did they have to contend with me, they also had to contend with the car coming around a second time. And, and you know, let's not lose track of the fact that that night's in. That's a high crime area. So now you also have to watch for stragglers, you know. So there's a lot going on at that time. So they're both very professional officers. 
Yeah, you know, it, it, it's a tale of multiple people who were brave in that situation. Uh, it was a chaotic scene from what was just even described. I can't even imagine what it was like for you and your team to be there. Uh, this trial was pretty fascinating to watch. Now, I have to ask you, uh, it was brought up yesterday in the sentencing. We know Ramon Bueno, the jury was hung as to the attempted murder charge. My question to you is, A, when you heard that, were you surprised that they were hung as to that charge? And B, you had indicated that you're not looking for an additional trial on that charge. So why do you feel that way? I'll first start with, were you surprised by the attempted, by the hung jury on that charge? And B, why no new trial? Okay, yeah, I, I was uh, shocked to say um, the least on the hung jury um, on the attempted murder. I will tell you that um, I have learned uh, <clears throat> one of the reasons reasons that hung the jury, um, now that the case is over with and it can be discussed, um, I will, uh, that'll be in my book. Um, and I, I have told people, um, I just give you a hint, um, when you read it, uh, not only will it shock you, it'll make you want to throw the book through a window. You will just be, it, it's incredible um, how this person got onto the jury. Um, the, I mean, it, the, the reason just asinine. Um, so that that was the first. And then the second question you asked, um, you know, as I said to Judge Fisk yesterday and I, I held him, you know, I held her to it. Um, if he had been sentenced to enough time that he's not going to get out of prison, then I, I really didn't see the need to um, waste the court's time. You know, taxpayers, <laughs> you know, I mean, he's 45, let's say 45 years old. He's got 85 years in prison. I mean, you know, 130 years old by the time he'd get out, if, you know, and obviously he'll never get out. So I, I just don't see the need to, and I don't want to go through all that again, uh, you know. Um, Completely understandable. Was, Completely understandable. Uh, you know, trials, there's something to go through. I totally get it. Uh, and for you, as you sit back and you think, would you, would you encourage people, despite everything that happened, would you encourage people to join law enforcement, to serve in the military, to put themselves in these um, you know, highly brave but also highly dangerous situations. Uh, I'm curious your perspective given you know, what happened to you, how you tell people who maybe are interested in going into that profession, what do you tell them? Um, I, I'm, I was in the Air Force, uh, so um, I, I, I'm pro-military. I think that's a great idea. Um, you know, I, I get a lot of young people always ask me that question. Um, they said, you know, hey, I want to be an officer. What should I do? And, and, you know, it's kind of the three basic things that I tell them is, number one, you know, the military is always an option. But college is definitely, you know, get a degree is an option. And, and number three is I always help you. If you're not going to do those two, you have to establish a stable work history, especially from the time you're out of high school until you apply. So, you know, for example, I, I did crack down and investigations briefly. And, you know, if you're, say, 23 years old and you've not done college and or military and you come to me and, you know, you've had 14 jobs in five years, I mean, it just shows as a background investigator, it just shows you have no stable work history. So, um, you know, now as far as getting into law enforcement, um, I, yeah, I, I love the career. Yeah. Um, I can tell you, uh, <laughs> my youngest son, Brandon, he always wanted to be a doctor. And now, uh, this past Christmas, he was telling me how he's talking about he wants to be a police officer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, the the father part of me, you know, screams no, but you know, uh, right. Listen, you're 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 the best example that there is, and I have to tell you, Trooper Casey, it was an honor. I want to thank you for your service. I want to thank you for coming on the program and speaking to us. And from all of us here, we really do wish you the best of luck. Thanks again. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate sure having me and have a good day. You too. All right, Thanks. everybody, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have more.